I want to direct your attention to the book of Joshua chapter 4. Joshua chapter 4 in the Old Testament. My subject tonight, you're going to make it. I heard a song, uh, Mike Perky, he, he sang it, I'm going to make it. And I, that thing was just going over in my spirit. And so I penned the title here, You're Going to Make It. So many times, if we aren't careful, we tend to forget what God has already done for us. God wants us to drive down memorials, and he wants us to remember what he has done. So many times we tend to forget. But God wants us to remember. Israel was standing right on the brink of a great miracle. And as the story unfolds, Joshua told the people, I want you to go down to the edge of the Jordan River, and then I want you to march out into the water. And when their feet touched the edge of the river, the waters that came down from above they rose up, they parted, they congealed, and the people walked through on dry ground. That was a great miracle. And Joshua commanded the people to pick up 12 stones out of the Jordan, one to represent each tribe, and to carry them over to the other side. God, when he does something like this, he does that so all the people will know. Now, look with me at Joshua Four and five. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that it may be a sign, a memorial among you, that when your children ask their fathers in the time to come, saying, What meaneth ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. When God does something great in our lives, we need to drive down a stake, a memorial. You've heard me tell it and say it many times. I have many memorials. I just drive a stake down where God has done something great in my life, and we've got some stories to tell. Every one of us here, we've got some stories to tell about what God has done in our lives, and we need to remember our deliverances. We need to remember these great victories, so when you face your next trial, that when you do that, you can face it with great faith. Knowing that God did it here, God did a miracle here, God did a miracle there, and my God shall deliver me through this set of circumstances, and victory belongs to me. I'll tell you what, if you can just take the devil back to the cross, don't let him get you to looking at your circumstances, don't let him get him to look at your good works, take him to the cross. And tell him about the blood of Jesus, how Jesus stripped him of his power, made a show of him openly, triumphed over him in it, and gave you the keys of the kingdom. And victory belongs to you because of the finished work of the cross. Somebody go on and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you tonight on the subject, you're going to make it. Let us pray. Father, we praise you. We love you. Thank you, Lord, for how your presence has graced this place all day long. Lord, when we come on Friday night, when we come to pray, when we come into this sanctuary, Lord, that is the awesome presence of the Most High God. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Let me preach the gospel with the anointing of the Spirit. Wear me, Lord. Wear me and clothe me in that anointing. Give us a listening ear. Speak to your people, Lord, and let them know that no matter what they are facing, that they're going to make it, that victory belongs to them because, Lord, you paid it all at Calvary. We bless you and we praise you. And everyone said in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to ask you a question. Are you facing a crisis tonight? Do you have a gigantic problem that you're facing in your home, in your marriage, in your family, at work, or anywhere else? Have you ever wondered... How am I going to make it? How am I going to rise above this situation 
and this set of circumstances. I'm sure there are many of you that are under the sound of my voice that you got some questions just like that. If you will remember your past victories, if you will remember your past deliverances, it will increase your faith and it will help you to understand that through Calvary and through the blood of Jesus, you can make it and handle your present situation. Church, we need to give God glory for what he's already done. I mean, Thanksgiving is coming up, but every day should be a, a day of thanks living, not just Thanksgiving, but thanks living. Hallelujah. We need to remember our past and, and the victories so we can move on into our future with full assurance of faith. Ask yourself, how many desperate prayers has the Lord already answered for you? Just ask yourself that. Sometimes I, I get to looking back over my life and and, and I've got memorials, and I know you have them. I've got places that I go and talk to God. And sometimes I can remember exactly what he told me on a certain date in a certain situation I was facing. Didn't he always come through for you? Didn't he always come through? Hasn't he always been faithful? Hasn't he always spread a table in your wilderness? Hasn't he been good to you? Church, we don't need to just see the glory, you know, when we're on the mountaintop. We need to see the glory of God in our past and what God has done for us. We, you don't see God's glory. I need to tell you this. And you won't see God's glory until you are facing a crisis-type situation. Now, he can come into the tabernacle anytime he wants to and show his glory. But I'm talking about in your personal walk. You will be facing some type of resistance when God comes through and shows up and shows his glory. So all the problems of life, they're not just, you know, the devil. Sometimes God tries our faith. Sometimes he just wants to see what you're made of. He wants to see, do you really trust me? Can I count on you to count on me when the situation is down? That's what God is saying. Will you put your trust? Will you put your faith in me? Will you let me work a greater work in your life? Because that's what God wants us to do. Take my heart, Lord, and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, Lord, and I just give it to you. Take it, Lord, and make me. I love to preach on that. Jesus said, follow me, and I'll make you fishes of me. And I like to preach it like this. Jesus said, follow me, and I'll make you. He'll make you into what you ought to be. He'll make you into what he planned for you. He's a great God, and he deserves the glory. Some of us have seen the glory of God, you know, in our lives when everything is going right. And we just give God glory. But God wants you to see the glory and to know that he is in control of your life, that the Lord God omnipotent reigneth no matter what you're going through. Whether it's good, whether it's wrong, whether it's bad, whatever you're going through, the Bible says the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Your miracle is not in what you've lost. Your miracle is always in what you have left. God takes what you have, and God makes it into something. Whatever you give to God, that's what God will work with. And if you'll give him all of you, guess what? You can get all of him, and God will work in your life to his good pleasure. Your miracle is not in what you have lost. Your miracle is always in what you have left. And let me tell you when you know you've got real faith. It's when the world says no. It's when the banker tells you no. It's when your friends say no. When the devil and the demon powers come, uh, come breathing down your neck and tell you no. But God says yes. That's when you know you've got some real faith. You, you've been told by people, no, you can't be delivered. You've been told by the doctors, you can't be healed. The devil has told you your marriage can't have any joy. Well, let me tell you something. He'll tell you that you can't get a breakthrough in your finances. He'll tell you that your family can't be saved. But if you got real faith, it doesn't matter what others say. It only matters what God says. And God says that he is good. And if you'll trust him, that, that no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. When the enemy comes in like a flood... He will lift up a standard against them. God is for you. And the Bible says if God be for us, 
Who can be against us? Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is a great God. Amen. You know that you got some real faith when you're stable in God. I like what the Apostle Paul said. It didn't matter where you put that man. He said, none of these things move me. He was moved by one thing. He said, I only glory in one thing. I glory in Jesus Christ and him crucified. And when you get to that place in your life, God will add everything to your life. It's when you're down to the zero factor and it looks like there's no way out, that's when you really got to depend on God. That's when you really need some faith. But you can be stable in the bad times just like you can be stable in the good times. Then if you will just be stable and find your stability in the word of God, God can release his miracle working power into your life. And, and church, we've got to remember our past deliverances in order to increase our faith to handle our present struggle. I like that old song. I, I don't know, it just keeps going around and around in me. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. See, we, we come to the Lord at the cross, and then we get on our journey. And if we aren't careful, we start looking at our good works. We start looking at the church. We start looking at the preacher. We go from one place to the other looking for somebody that can help us find our deliverance. I'll tell you who can help you find your deliverance. His name is Jesus. And if you can just see him and touch him, glory to God, he will make you whole. Don't let the devil get you putting your faith in anything else other than the blood of Jesus and the finished work of Calvary. Oh, we're to do what we can do. But I'll tell you what, when you've done everything you can do and you can't get the job done, if you'll just look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, he'll step into your situation and he'll show up and show off. He'll show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is a good God. Do you remember what you were like before Jesus saved you? Do you really know how close to hell you were? Can you remember the miracles and the changes that took place in your heart and in your life when Jesus saved you? See, if we aren't careful, we forget what God has already done. We forget the victories. We forget the miracles. We forget what God has already performed in our life. We need to always remember and drive a memorial down. I tell you, I go back to the cross. Uh, I, I visit there every day. I tell you that. I don't live my life there. I go on to be seated with him in heavenly places. But I need to go down to Calvary and get a checkup from the neck up. I need to make sure that my life is right, my heart is right, my talk is right, my walk is right. I need to make sure everything in my life is ordered by God's word. His word is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I don't want to sin any sin. I just want to look to Jesus and say, Lord, help me, keep me. I tell you, sometimes we get attitudes that are wrong. Sometimes people wrong us. But I just chose a long time ago to love them. You've heard me say it a thousand times. I'm not going to let my happiness be in anybody else's head. My happiness is in Jesus, and I'm happy, 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 happy. I've got the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. And when the enemy comes, praise God, I don't try to fight him in my strength. I take him to Calvary, and I show him who Jesus is. Glory to God. Lord will fight your battles. Amen. 
We're like those early disciples sometimes. They didn't understand the miracles that the Lord had performed when he fed the, the thousands with a few loaves and fishes. Jesus performed that miracle twice. On one occasion, he fed 5,000 men plus the women and children. On another occasion, he fed 4,000 plus the men and women. Yet, just a few days later, the disciples, they had forgotten all about the miracles. And, and Jesus was talking to them about the leaven of the Pharisees, and they thought he was talking about, to them about the fact they had brought no bread for the journey. Look at what Jesus said. Look at Matthew 16, 19. I mean, he had performed these mighty miracles. Jesus said, Do you not understand, neither remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? Neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up? How is it that you do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread, that you should be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, then, look at verse 12, then understood they how he had bid them not beware of leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You know, doctrine's important. And, and if you get a wrong doctrine, it can get you off on a wrong trail. That's why I'm preaching the articles of faith on Sunday morning. I want to make sure that this church, you know, I don't want anybody looking at the preacher, basing what they do on the preacher. Amen. I don't want it based on this denomination. I want it based on this book and the blood of Jesus and on Christ, the chief cornerstone. And if we'll do that, the Holy Ghost will honor us. But the Lord, he was overwhelmed at how quickly his disciples had forgotten about those two miracles. He asked them, he said, how is it your hearts are so hardened? How is it that you cannot understand? You've got eyes, but you cannot see. You've got ears, yet you cannot hear. Do you not remember how I broke the bread and fed the multitudes? The Lord was letting the, these disciples know, I can take care of your need. All you need to do is remember the miracles I've already performed. I, I don't know who that's for tonight, but I got a word for somebody. Quit worrying about how you're going to pay your bills. Quit worrying about how you're going to do it. The Lord is letting you know tonight that he is going to take care of your need. Hasn't he already performed miracles in your life? That's what he was telling his disciples, and that's what he's saying to some disciples tonight. The devil is trying to get you looking at the circumstances. God says, I want you to lift up your eyes unto the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help cometh from the... I, I'm prophesying now, not preaching. Hallelujah. Lift up your eyes unto the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help cometh from the Lord which made the heaven and earth. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. He will come through for you. Just keep your faith anchored in the blood of Calvary's cross and the finished work of Jesus. And victory is on the way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you imagine being there and seeing the disciples carrying those baskets, passing out the bread and just breaking it, breaking the fish and just feeding the multitude? Can you imagine being present for something like that? The miracle of the loaves and the fishes, they were multiplied right before these disciples' eyes. Yet a few days later, they had forgotten all about it. The disciples had seen the miraculous with their own eyes, yet the significance of it, it did not register in their mind. So what you've got to do is drive memorials down, and then you've got to go back to those over and over and rehearse what God has already done for you. Let it get from your brain, the mind is the gateway into the spirit. Let it get down into your spirit man, the hidden man of the heart, where the devil dare not come, glory to God, because of the blood. Get it out of your brain, down in the spirit man. Glory to God. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He's not talking about building your bulging biceps. He's talking about getting the word of God 
down into your heart and getting God's miraculous work, miracle working power, what he's done, down into your heart and remembering what he's already done. Didn't he do it before? Won't he do it again? Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's the most high. He's possessor of heaven and earth. He's a deliverer from every enemy that we face. Glory to God. God wants us to remember. That's what he's saying tonight. Remember that the Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. He knoweth them that trust in him. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. Set your heart on things above. Set it like concrete. If you then be risen with Christ, set your affection on things above and not upon the things of the earth. Then with Christ, which is our life, shall appear. Then shall we appear with him in glory. And while we're here, he's going to see that you live the more abundant life that he promised in his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Remember, guard every memory. Remember every victory. Remember these things. Keep them fresh in your mind. And every time you face another crisis, every time you face another giant, remember the facts of what God has already done for you. Amen. Guard your memories. Keep them close at hand. Don't ever forget the victories and the deliverances that you've already experienced. Remember every detail so you can tell the story. We got some stories to tell. Amen. If you will find for me uh, Romans eleven twenty eight in uh, the King James Version and in the New King James Version. I'm going to ask you to put that up by Romans eleven twenty eight. I got a text this morning from Brother Philip Pearson. He was down at Royal Rangers, and he sent me this. He said, I want you to read this scripture in the New King James Version. And um, I got it, and I responded to him. I don't, the reception's not good down there. 1129. Okay, go to the next verse. That's what I want, 1129. Look at that. For the gifts and the calling of God, that's New King. King James says, for the gifts and calling of God, that, that they are without repentance. That's King James. But look at the New King. It says, they are irrevocable. <laughs> that, that, that means that God is not going to change his mind he, he's not going to forget you where you are and, and I got to thinking about the favor and my brother Philip he doesn't call me without asking me how you're doing and, and, and I wait sometimes to ask him and we always say I'm blessed and highly favored of God I mean that's just our normal conversation how you doing brother Blessed and highly favored of God. And so I, when I called him, my computer had crashed. I could not get that monitor to come up, and I went to bed. It was working real good. And, you know, I called Brother Philip because he's got tremendous knowledge about the computers. And so he told me what my problem might be, might be, might be. And I'm thinking, man, I, I need to get this thing working today. And I, need, I, I said, God, I need your favor now. That's what I said. I said, I need God's favor right now. And, and I'm talking to him. I said, I, I'm going to do something. I'm just going to try this. I'm going to hard crash it because it, it doesn't matter at this point anyway what, what happened. I took that thing and, and just hard crashed it. And I waited a few minutes. I, I hung the phone up. I waited a few minutes, and I saw that screen pop up. You know, I saw some information coming across the screen I said glory to God this thing's gonna work and I called him back and I said it's, it's coming up it's coming up I said it's almost up and about that time that thing hit I said you gotta excuse me a moment I said I gotta dance a little while I was dancing before I ever got to church and I said I'm gonna just remember what God has done for me 
you got to drive those memorials down. Then you got to tell the story. Somebody said, well, that's not so significant. Well, it might not be to you, but if you had 1,150 sermons on a hard drive that you wanted to keep, I got a backup, but you wouldn't want to have to do all of that stuff to go through that again. God came through. I, I, you know, I just did what I know to do sometimes, just crash it and start it over, but it worked. That's the favor of God. We are blessed. Sometimes we just miss God's favor because we're looking for something, you know, that, that way out there. Well, God just gives favor all the time. And when he does, he wants you to drive a memorial down. You, you've heard me tell the story about my daddy when uh, we didn't have any coal. I mean, you know, we're freezing in the wintertime. This is a memorial. I used to, I love to tell this story. Well, I've heard your story so many times. Well, I know you have, but this is a good one. I mean, you know, he goes out to the coal shed and gets on his knees and prays and comes back in the house and says, well, I done put it all in God's hand. About that time, a knock comes at the door. Man from fault in the coal yard. Said, Mr. Nelson, said, I was over here delivering some coal, and, and I've got some left on my truck, and I don't want to take it back to the coal yard. Would you like to have it? <laughs> Glory to God. What a God. What a God. God knows where you are. God knows who you are. And God can solve your problem. Hallelujah. And what I want to tell you is, you're going to make it. Hallelujah. God wants us to remember. Tell future generations how you in bondage. Tell them how the Lord delivered you. Tell your story. See, we need to tell our stories and we need to hand them down to the future generation. Look, look at this. God wants his people to pass. Now look, let me show you an example. Psalms 78 and 1. Give thanks, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which ye have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Verse 4. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and the wonderful works that he has done. See, God wants to make a, us to make a proclamation and to tell what he has done. Look at verse 6. That the generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Wow. That they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. God said, if you'll tell your stories, if you'll tell about my goodness, if you'll talk to your children about my mercy, then it will affect your children, and it will cause them to want to serve a God that answers prayer like that. I'll tell you, we got some stories to tell. We got some victories to talk about. God has been good to us. Hallelujah. We're sitting in church tonight. We got a right mind about us. We got clothes on our back. Got shoes on our feet. We got food on the table waiting at home or in the refrigerator. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. He knoweth them that trust in him. God said, I want you to remember your deliverances. I want you to tell your stories to your children. He said, tell them how God brought you out of bondage. Tell them how God made a way when there was no way. Tell them how God sent manna when you were in the wilderness and you had nothing to eat. Tell them how you were thirsty and you struck the rock. And tell them how water gushed out of that rock and the men drank and the women drank and the cattle drank and the herds drank. He's the El Shaddai. He's the God who's more than enough. And they had plenty. Glory to God. Tell them how you were led every day by a cloud. It kept you cool. And by you were warmed at night by a pillow of fire. Hallelujah. Tell them how I provided for your every need. And tell them how you got to where you are. Thank you, Father. you need to tell your children. 
You see this fine home we're living in? It wasn't always like that. Let me tell you where I was. Let me tell you about my mother's prayers when we're living on Cotton Mill Hill and I can hear my mother praying, Lord, I know you got something better than this for us. Thank you for what we got, Lord. But I believe you've got plenty, and you'll bring us out, Lord. And I'm asking you to move us, and I'm asking you to elevate us. And I can hear my mother praying, glory to God. I can hear her praying for me. I can hear her reading my mail and telling me how I ought to live my life. I can hear her, and I can hear my daddy in my mindset talking to me and saying, Son, you're a good man, but you need Jesus. You need to give your heart to the Lord. And all of that and all those prayers, they affected me. And I'm standing in a pulpit preaching the everlasting gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because I got some stories to tell, and they passed them down to me. And I'm passing them to another generation. You got some stories to tell. You got a story to tell about how, why you're sitting in church tonight. <laughs> it's no accident that you are where you are. You're here because God has been faithful to you. You've got a story to tell, and God commands us to pass it on. You need to tell the songs that were being sung when you walked into that church. You need to tell him how you were lost and you had no peace with God. And all of a sudden, the singing, the singers got to singing and the preacher got to preaching. And something got a hold of you and God snapped your brain. And the next thing you knew, you were down at an altar repenting of your sin. And God brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light, put joy unspeakable full of glory in your heart and now he calls you his child and you're in the church and you got people that love you and you got a family and you got a home. God's been good to you. Go on and praise him. Hallelujah. You got some stories to tell. Amen. And the members of our past victories, they help us to increase our faith of what we're going through right now. If you can come to grips with what God can do, you won't need a whole lot of faith to face your giants. If you'll just come to grips with what God has done and what God can do, you won't need a whole lot of faith to face your giants. Just remember the cross. Always remember, I was lost and undone without God or his son. But Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was lost and undone without God or his son. When he reached down his hand for me, when my Savior reached down for me, he had to reach way down for me. Well, I was lost and undone without God. For his son, when my Savior reached down for me, oh, he passed around some PhDs, he passed around some doctors and some lawyers, uh, people with big degrees and long titles behind that name. He passed around a lot of good folk, and he reached way over there into the sin pool and cesspool of iniquity and he said I choose you you're chosen he said you've not chosen me I've chosen you and I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit he said so drive some memorials down just remember what I have done remember who I am and remember what I can do. I, I want you to notice this pattern out of the scriptures of how God works. God brings us out of a crisis by getting us to focus on him. He brings us out of our crisis by getting us to take an upward look and focus on him. Now I told you I need to to go by the cross and visit there every day to make sure my sins are under the blood and they've been washed away. But then I go on 
to where my great high priest Jesus is seated at the right hand of his majesty on high. And I see him there as Lord and high priest of a new and a better covenant. And God that spared not his own son, but freely delivered him up for us all, he has promised me and he has promised you that through Christ he will freely give us all things. All he wants is all of us. If you can ever get to the point that you can cry like Jesus cried, not my will, but thine be done. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. He's looking into the bitter cup. And then he says, not my will, but thy will be done. That's where your victory is. Who am I talking to? Amen. Job was suffering. And it looked like old brother Job had lost it all. He had forgotten what God had done. And the, in the midst of his trials, he forgot just how great his God was. And the Lord asked him, to what is the earth fastened, Job? Who shut up the sea and told the ocean, oceans, thus far shall you go and no further? Job, what keeps the waves from overcoming the land? And why aren't you drowned already by the rising waters? How is the light parted from the darkness? What controls the wind? And how is the rain born, Job, can you tell me? Who do you think put all those forces of nature in place, Job? God literally is telling Job, you have forgotten who I am, and you have forgotten what I can do. And then Job realized just how foolish he had been. And now Job, he looks at the same problems, and he says, I've been so foolish because I've had my eyes on my pain instead of my eyes being on you. Lord, I have forgotten all these things about you. And Lord, I have forgotten that you can do anything. And God delivered Job when he came to that point in his life and gave him the double portion blessing that he received. Some of you have been through some hard times. But that's all right. Because the Lord said, let them know I'm going to bring them out. And when he brings you out, you're not going to come out empty. You're going to come out with God's favor upon you. When the children of Israel came out of Egyptian bondage, they came out loaded down. Look at Psalms 105, verse 37. It says, he brought them forth with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribe. God brought them out loaded down with the spoils of Egypt. Can you imagine working 430 years and never being compensated? And then they go, God says, go, go, go get some of that stuff. And they go over to this woman who's been making clothes. And, and, and the little boy goes up and knocks on the door and says, I want those clothes, some of those clothes my mother made for you, made for your husband, made for your children. We leave in this place. God's favor's on us, and I want those clothes. And then they go over and say, give me some of those earrings. Give me some of those necklaces. I mean, they'd worked for 430 years, and look at that scripture, Psalms 105. Look at it. Put it back up there. He brought them forth with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribe. How did they get that stuff? They got it the same way you get it. You go after it, praise God. They went after it. And when you go after God, you will find God. Hallelujah. They came out with their sons and their daughters. They came out with people with the spoils of their enemies. They came out in health. They did not come out empty. And you don't have to come out of your trial empty either. You can come out with sacks full of joy. You can come out with sacks full of peace. You can come out with sacks full of provision. You can come out with God's 
favor upon you. And you don't come out by yourself. They didn't come out by themselves. The whole family came out with them. Their sons and their daughters, they all came out together because God, who is able to deliver, he delivered them. Let us stand. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you, you're going to make it in Jesus' name. You know, I was sitting back there uh, listening to Pastor Jerry's sermon. And, um, if you'd like to help me sing it, that would be fine too. But um, I was singing about that song before he started singing. When he reaches down his hand for me. Oh, he reaches down his for me Oh, I was lost and undone without God or His Son Oh, He reached down His hand for Oh, he reached down his hand for me. Oh, he reached down his hand for me. Oh. There's some of you, you need to get up from where you are. You need to make an old-fashioned victory march. You just need to get out and start walking across this place. Glory to God. Say, Lord, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory. Yes, glory. Yes, come on. If he, God is talking to you tonight and you're in your crisis, just start walking that victory march. Victory belongs to you. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying. Saying, don't and you remember what I've done and remember who God. I am. And just like I brought oh, you out son. before, I'm oh, bringing you out this time. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to take to Oh, he reaches down his hand for me. When he reaches down his hand for me, oh, he had to reach way down for me. Oh, I was lost and undone. 
without God or His Son. Oh, He reads down His hand. 